Now that we've seen the outside of the compressor, let's take a closer look at the internal components. Inside the casing is the rotor. Rotors usually consist of a solid center shaft with impellers keyed and pressed onto the center shaft. In most centrifugal compressors, rotors are built with a balanced piston installed at the discharge end to relieve the thrust bearing load. Stacked rotors consist of a stub shaft for each end, several impellers, a balancing piston, spool pieces, and other needed parts, all held together with a heavy center bolt. Although this type of rotor is always used in a stacked style, vertically split casing, it can also be used in other types of casings as well. The impeller is the most critical part of a centrifugal compressor because its size, shape, and speed determine the compressor performance. Most often you'll find two types of impellers, closed and semi-open. In a closed impeller, shrouds cover both sides of the blades. On one side, a central hole or eye allows gas to enter the impeller. The closed impellers are the most common and are mainly used in multi-stage compressors. As the gas leaves the impeller, it's forced into a passageway in the casing called the diffuser. The diffuser forms an increasingly larger path for the gas to flow through. Now let's look at how each stage in a multi-stage centrifugal compressor is separated from the next. All the parts that make up one stage of a multi-stage centrifugal compressor can be found on a single stage compressor. One stage is separated from the next by a specially designed part of the casing called the diaphragm. The adjacent walls of individual diaphragms form a diffuser passage. After the gas travels through the diffuser, it passes through the return channel of the diaphragm. As the shaft rotates, a wedge-shaped film of oil produces a stabilizing force that tends to reduce vibration. This self-aligning property will compensate for any misalignment and will tend to distribute the loads evenly. To control the axial motion of the shaft, thrust bearings are used. They are usually of the double acting tilt pad design so that thrust loading in either direction can be supported. A typical thrust bearing has a thrust collar attached to the shaft and thrust shoes arranged in a circular bearing case. Oil is pumped from the reservoir through a filter to a cooler where it is cooled to the correct operating temperature. This cooled, clean oil then flows under pressure to each bearing through holes and grooves.